Hey everyone, Brian here with my movie of the month. It's a little early, but this is for May 2009. And the movie of the month is, of course, as you can see, Hey There, Jogi Bear. Now you probably noticed it. Now you probably are not surprised by the fact that I'm doing this scene as though uh, I mentioned that I am a huge Yogi Bear fan by the video I did. So, anyway, I decided that this month's movie of the month would be Hey There, Yogi Bear because of that. Now, Hey There, Yogi Bear was made originally, in, as I mentioned in my other video, and I'll mention it again, in 1964. Now, this, though, says 1986. The reason was, back in the 70s, and I believe mostly in the mid-80s and early 90s, matinees out there would, there would be matinees, theaters would have matinees on Saturdays and during the summers for kids that would showcase, um, well, they would showcase uh, mo animated movies uh, from the past di couple of decades and such. And Hey There, Yogi Bear was one of those movies that they uh, showcased in the theaters. Now, the matinees were usually, you know, in the early afternoon, possibly late morning, something to keep the kids, you know, get the kids out of the house and, you know, allow them to watch something and basically go to the theater and let them watch something that they can enjoy and the family can enjoy as a family. I guess I double-talked myself there, didn't I? But anyway... Hey There, Yogi Bear was released, was re-released, as it seems, back in the mid-1980s, just for that. And KVC Home Video, which is, I guess, was, which was, I guess, a sub-side, a, a subdivision of Paramount Home Video, along with Clubhouse Pictures, which I think was a subdivision, a kid division for Paramount, released it onto, released it, not just in the theaters, but released it onto home video. The movie is very good. It's got a great storyline. The characters are well, de are definitely remade to be, definitely, re I, I have to say this, you know, honestly, they did a great job in the character designing, making them more well-rounded, more feature-length film-like, uh, of course, as I mentioned in my other video, Cindy Bear went from having that blue fur color to having a kind of like a beige color now that matches Yogi and Boo Boo. And the story is real simple. And I don't want to spoil anything for people that haven't seen it yet. But I'm pretty sure mostly people have seen it. But if you haven't seen it, I suggest you kind of turn down the volume right now. But the story is like this. It basically starts out the same way any Yogi Bear cartoon had. Yogi awakes during the spring, and one of the first things he does is goes after a picnic basket. That's good. Now, Ranger Smith, you know, apparently is waiting for him to do this because Ranger Smith, you know, is finally on to a lot of what Yogi's been doing. I'm not sure if maybe if Ranger Smith had been spying on Yogi the previous year, finding out what he was planning or something, I don't know. But, apparent, but what happens is that Yogi Bear gets so frustrated at the fact that the ranger is always there just when he doesn't expect him to be, that Yogi decides, okay, I'm going to try to sack him out. I'm going to try to basically use reverse psychology on him and make him want me and basically ask for my release out of the park. In other words, he wants to be traded. He wants out. Thinking and knowing his, of the close friendship that the ranger has with him, that the ranger will keep Yogi in the park on the condition that the ranger allows Yogi to get fed and to take as many picnic baskets as he wants. Basically, he's trying to make him a deal. Now, Ranger Smith decides, uh-uh, not going to happen. Happen. And then if you want your wish, you want out, you're going to get it. And Yogi does. He ends up getting um, a, sort of like a tag hung over his neck saying, Destination, you know, San Diego Zoo. Now, fortunately, Yogi is able to trick a bear that named Copone, I think, a bear, basically another bear named Copone, uh, who's trying to, who seems to be taking over his cave since Yogi's leaving. 
And basically, he tricks this bear into taking his place. So what does Yogi do after he tricks this bear into going into San Diego to his place, in his place? Well, of course, Yogi goes into hiding and becomes the brown phantom. Now, unknown, however, this is unknown to Boo Boo and Cindy, who think Yogi is in San Diego. But when Ranger Smith gets whiff, gets whiff of this brown phantom, starts hearing about what's going on, Ranger Smith drives around in his Jeep around the park, telling all the bears that when he, whoever, they, whoever, whoever is the brown phantom, that once he finds who that person is, who that bear is, he's going to send them to the San Diego Zoo. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Cindy, thinking Yogi's in San Diego, decides, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to take the blame. Aim as being the brown phantom. So she goes and takes the blame and gets shipped off to what she thinks is San Diego, but then finds out is actually St. Louis. Now, doing all this, now what, now doing all this, Yogi kind of has a visit from his inner self, his conscience, and is brought to the realization that, yeah, all this brown phantom stuff and, and everything is great, and you can say you miss your friend Boo Boo all you want, but the truth is what you, who you miss the most Oast is Cindy, and that Cindy is the one piece of the puzzle you is the one piece you need to put into your puzzle into your life puzzle to complete it. So basically, Yogi finally realizes, hey, you know, you're right. I need to finally let Cindy know. I need to stop being shy. I need to stop hiding my feelings from her. I need to let her know. Unfortunately, Yogi finds out that Cindy has been sent to St. Louis, but on her way there, Cindy's cage along with her in it, you know, somehow it slides out of the uh, cargo door or out of the tray, out of the, out of one of the, I don't know how you call it, one of the cargo bays. And he's, he basically, basically Cindy's cage, you know, kind of slips free of the cargo bays by accident on the train. She's captured and thus she is captured later on by a ruthless circus owner and basically forced to com you know basically forced to be a high wire bear which is sort of like i guess an you know a homage or homage to her first appearance in the yogi bear franchise now anyway what happens is to make a long story short what happens is yogi and boo boo after boo boo realizes that yogi is still back in you know is back you know or is with always, always has been back in Jellystone, decides they're going to go after Cindy. They're going to decide to go rescue her. So, in typical Yogi Bear fashion, they escape the park, travel almost halfway up the country, finally find Cindy, rescue her, which also allows Yogi to finally admit his feelings to her by singing a song to her. They end up in New York, and on the and during this journey, they get chased by dogs, police, sheriffs. They get. They end up, believe it or not, they end up in the end. They end up in the back of a car, in which, where towards the end of the film, they kind of go into a car, or you know, the back of a pickup truck, or a trailer truck, thinking they're going to go back to Jellystone Park. But instead, believe it or not, they end up in the middle of New York City. And in the end, Ranger Smith, after seeing them on television, decides, okay, that's it. You know, I'm going to bring, I'm going to go back, I'm going to go to that city, I'm going to bring them back home. Home, because he realizes he shouldn't have shipped them out in the first place. And, of course, and, and of course, Ranger Smith does that. He goes to New York, he gets Yogi and Cindy and brings them back. Well, not before Yogi tries to wheel and deal his way into getting them you know, no bear sign, no, do not feed the bear signs removed. However, Ranger Smith kind of reverses that on him when Yogi accidentally falls off the beam in which him, Cindy, and Boo Boo are standing on after he thinks he succeeded in making, you know, getting rid of the ruling of the do not feed the bears. He's hanging on to the, and as he falls, he ends up hanging on to this rope by the grip of his hands. Ranger Smith kind of tricks him into thinking he's still, you know, he's way up high. All right, into kind of taking back the whole, you know, do not fade the Beaver signs deal and not making any more deals. 
So, in the end, R Ranger Smith does save them. And in the process, on the way home, thinking he's probably going to be out of a job, instead finds out he's actually going to be promoted to Chief Ranger. And thus, and, and thus they end up flying into the sunset, back to Jellystone. And ends a good movie. And thus ends what I feel is a pretty good family film. Uh, I give it probably about 9 out of 10 stars. If you've never seen it, I suggest you do. But, but that's all I can say for my movie of the month on Hey There, Chogi Bear. If you got any comments, just leave them. And until next time, I'm Brian saying God bless you, take care, and peace out.